All right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Today we have something very, very special. Yeah, special and brand new. Yep. Um, one Just of the uh, Age of Sigmar guys. Yes. And uh, what's the name of it? It's a Stormcast Eternal. Yay. Yay. Um, yeah, that's, uh, we just picked up the uh, new White Dwarf. Mm -hmm. um, I think for the first time since they changed the format. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, it came with a free miniature. So. <laughs> yeah, like in the good old days. Yeah, that worked. But um, um, yeah, the model looks pretty nice. Yeah, uh, really nice. Also, the, the fit of the uh, plastic was just perfect. The, the guy is huge, uh, also compared to, to a Space Marine, the, the guy is still pretty pretty big. Yeah, yeah the, uh, it's, it's about a head higher than, than a normal Space Marine. Yeah. So apparently, uh, after the end times, people were very, very well fed and uh, yeah, um, got some new shiny armor. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, talking about the armor, um, we've already, uh, although the, the model is just uh, released for two days, we've already seen some very nice versions out there, mm -hmm. uh, but they were all in uh, real metal, so yeah. um, we want to try and show you how to do a nice, fast, textured, uh, non-metallic on that one. Yeah. And uh, we set ourselves a little challenge. Um, now, um, we have one day that we said that we're going to film this for a full day. Uh, so we have about eight hours, or maybe now seven, I guess. <laughs> and um, we'll uh, edit everything uh, right afterwards. And uh, hopefully you'll have it all uh, done today when you see it, which is hopefully Tuesday. <laughs> but uh, no, it's, it's, uh, we saw, as, as I said, we saw some really cool um, uh, true metal ones already. And uh, we decided for that reason to do something different, mm -hmm. uh, which is the non-metallic version of that. All right. All right. Um, we're going with a um, standard <coughs> color scheme. Yeah. Um, I think a lot of people are interested uh, how uh, we would tackle something like the, the uh, box art of Games Workshop, so classic blue gold. Um, I think it's a nice color mix. And um, yeah, we'll give it a, our own little, uh, little twist uh, by the colors we use. Yeah. All right. Um, before we start, though, who are you? <laughs> Some people might not know you yet. <laughs> uh, yeah, my name is Ben Comets, and I paint miniatures for way too long. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, um, we are aware that maybe uh, this video will be viewed by a lot of people that don't know us yet. Um, um, so we are painting Buddha. We are making uh, instructional videos. Mm -hmm. um, for showcase, uh, basically, we're trying to uh, help you be a better painter. That's our motto. Yeah. And um, our goal is always to do like a very high quality showcase level uh, paint job. Uh, now, of course, in the seven hours, we're not going to win this layer sword with that. <laughs> but uh, maybe we get on third place, you know. <laughs> um, yeah, and this is just uh, one example of uh, the kind of videos we do. Uh, you always see we have a main screen, we have uh, the palette. Uh, you can always see exactly uh, what Ben is doing there. And then, of course, we also have the artist cam, so you can see how beautiful our, <laughs> our main artist here is. <laughs> so, uh, speaking of the palette cam, uh, you can see I uh, have here on the palette uh, some uh, scrofulous brown from uh, Game Color. It's a little bit like um, um, the old snake bed leather, maybe a bit more yellow, actually. Um, but that's a very nice uh, starting point for our non-metal. And um, I will mix that with some tank brown from um, Vallejo Model Air color to tone it a bit more to the brown side, also to make it warmer. Mm -hmm. um, and a tiny bit of black just to, to make it a bit darker. That is black from uh, also from model color. Yeah. And you might be wondering why we're not using uh, Citadel colors. Um, there's no particular reason at this point. Um, we use all kinds of paints. Um, we also have the full Citadel color set, uh, but we do tend to use um, different paints uh, mostly, I'd say, uh, but we mix and match all the time. Uh, so sometimes we'll do some Citadels. And... All right, so uh, we start on the black foundation because that will give us a very nice uh, and strong contrast in the end. Um, and I will start with the chest piece, as it's quite huge. And I will start to paint that medium tone on there. Mm -hmm. And 
as you can see, the um, paints are not um, covering on the first go, but that's not a problem. Yeah, we just because it's still uh, quite warm, as most of you guys in Europe know uh, here, <laughs> it's uh, pretty hot these days. And um, therefore, I want to make sure that that film is dried out because it's uh, drying rather quickly. And um, yeah, before we continue with the second layer, that should be drying. It looks good already. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for the last two days, we had over 40 degrees in the studio. So luckily, there was no filming on Saturday and Sunday. But today, I would say it's still about 30, like somewhere. In that area, it's very, very warm. We all know that uh, warmer fantasy was uh, was dead already. Um, uh, for a couple of months now, uh, of course, Games Workshop went through the old uh, end, end time stuff. Uh, actually, I'd say they, they released some really cool um, books, uh, like the end time books was really nice. The whole story behind it was really cool. Uh, but yeah, in, in a way, it came to an end. And uh, Age of Sigmar is definitely something completely new. It has nothing to do with, with uh, what we know as uh, fantasy. It's definitely nothing for tournaments or anything like that. But it looks like a kind of fun little game. Four pages of rules. Ooh, nice. Yep. Um, easy to pick up. Um, so definitely entry level kind of kind of thing. And um, I would have to say that um, it's of course the four ga the four games workshop. It's a big step. Um, but I want to congratulate them to be being this brave. You know, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see what the future holds there. Um, not a hundred percent even, um, but uh, I think that's quite okay. You can see here, in uh, in the middle, it's already quite a nice solid tone. Mm -hmm. And I will just for the people that haven't seen any of the videos, um, you might wonder. I always work because uh, due to the techniques I'm using, I always work in a very limited area. So. Mm -hmm. Even if I paint a lot more parts gold, I would just focus for now with, on one part, and that would be the chest plate. Yeah. Um, first thing here will be a strong highlight here on that uh, outer rim. Mm -hmm. uh, just here in the very middle, maybe a bit more to one side to have the light slightly tilted. It's nicer for for a lot of the effects in the non-metal. Have you decided for a uh, um, main direction of the light already? Um, I think the the light should come from this side here. Okay, a little bit from the left. Yeah. A little bit from the left. Um, also because we will have the the shield here mm -hmm. to that side, and I think it gives a nice contrast between the blue of the shield here and the light reflects on that side. Okay. So I'm loading my brush with some uh, base color and adding um, model color ivory to the to the top of the brush, mm -hmm. like that. Yep. Oh, maybe that was a little bit too much ivory, but all right. Uh, it was a bit too much ivory. So while this is still wet, uh, we can use some of the base color to blend it to the sides. Yeah, so if this is the first time you're watching any of our videos, um, there will be a couple of um, well, there's going to be some terminology that um, might be new to you. Um, one of them is uh, what we call the loaded brush. <laughs> um, loaded brush technique means um, that we are actually creating blendings in one go. Um, as uh, Ben just uh, mentioned, he put the base color 
on the back of the brush and like he's doing it now, puts a highlight color on the tip of the brush, starts painting and then of course as the highlight color on the tip is used up, um, you will uh, continue painting with the base color and with that you're creating an automatic blending. Um, now you probably all go like, woo, this is awesome uh, right now. Uh, it is a little tricky. Uh, yeah. You have to have to judge the amount of um, color in the in the tip. Uh, that's the, probably the hardest part. Uh, but maybe you can say something about the consistency on the paint, on the brush when you're doing these techniques. Yeah, uh, one really important thing uh, when you try the loaded brush for the first time and when you when you practice that is that the um, Paint in the in the back of the brush is uh, the base color is a lot thinner than the highlight color mm -hmm. or the second color that you apply on the tip of the brush. I uh, also uh, actually I'm painting more the highlights in the loaded brush and do the shadows and glazes because it works just a lot nicer with lighter color. Mm -hmm. And um, if it's not clean enough, you can always correct uh, the transition with glazes of the different tones again. Yeah. Here again, I'm just using a thin glaze of the uh, original base color to blend it in a little bit better to the sides. Yeah. And just in case we have some viewers that don't know what a glaze is, Ben. A glaze is a very thin. Shall I on my fingernail? Yeah. You can see that it's hardly visible, but once it's dry, you can still see see the difference. Yeah. It's it's basically like a wash without having too much liquid on the brush. In a wash you're basically covering everything and like the, the paint is uh, kind of seeping into the recesses and stuff. Yeah, with the, with the wash you really want the pigments together in the recesses. Mm -hmm. So you just flood the whole surface with the, with, uh, the wash. But um, a glaze is much more controlled and you just apply it where you want it actually to be. Mm -hmm. And glazes are nice for many, many reasons. Uh, first of all, as I said, if something doesn't turn out as smooth as you want, you can correct it right away. Uh, and secondly, uh, it just, it's just one of the properties. If the uh, underlying, underlying blending, for example, is not as perfect, but then you apply a glaze on top of it, uh, it'll kind of bind all of the underlying colors together and um, reduce the contrast in those uh, little mistakes. And uh, just by doing so, we'll create uh, smooth blendings. So I just did a little glaze of the uh, of a tank brown mm -hmm. diluted. I'll do the same here. So I'll apply the glaze, and then do another small thing. I'll feather it out to the sides with just the wet brush to get rid of any of these coffee stain like borders. And what you've seen so far, these are basically the, the main techniques uh, that Ben uses to create uh, his works uh, in a very, very short amount of time. He's a very fast painter. Uh, and like all of the good painters, uh, he's uh, created a system for himself that allows him to paint as quickly and as good as possible. So again, loaded brush is uh, one of the techniques. Then glazes is the second one of the techniques. And oftentimes just using water to um, create uh, smooth blendings or what some people also call feathering is another one of the techniques. Yeah. And so you can see I also uh, just put a tiny bit of uh, the tank brown around the rivet. And now I have a, a highlight color mix on a palette and I'll use that to highlight the just the edge here. Can you also say something about the brush you're using? Mm -hmm. Yes, sure. Um, um, I'm using a uh, already quite used uh, Winston Newton Series Seven, the uh, long hair mm -hmm. ones, and I really like those brushes because they uh, have quite a big reservoir to store either paint or water, so you can paint quite a long distance with that. Yeah. 
And the second, and that's probably the most important feature of any brush, is it holds the tip very well. Yeah. Um, having a good tip is um, just absolutely necessary. If <laughs> if your brush loses the tip too early um, or just loses the tip at all, basically it's no good for uh, showcase painting anymore. At least not for <laughs> for the fine techniques. You can still use it for like base coating and stuff. But yeah. Yeah, uh, really, uh, a fine tip is actually the the most necessary thing yeah. you need for a sharp result in the end. You also have another highlight here to the sides. Not as bright as the the one in the middle. So when you've not been known to be a gamer, right? That's true. <laughs> so, so you are not <laughs> concerned at all about any kind of uh, fluff issues. Uh, you are not enraged about uh, eighth edition being not supported anymore. Probably don't even know that there were eighth editions, or did you? What eighth edition? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, now you have a pretty long history with Games Workshop, though. Yeah, that's uh, that's true. Um, for me, all that competition painting, and uh, I think I've been doing that for. Uh, 11 years now? It's probably uh, 12, isn't it? 12, yeah, yeah, it's 12 years. God. Yeah. <laughs> um, what a nerd. <laughs> and it all started with, uh, with the uh, Game Stays and Golden Demons. Yeah. Um, that really uh, hooked me onto all that competition painting. Yeah. And That's also where we met, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Those, those fateful days. <laughs> And uh, now you've been not completely unsuccessful at Game Stays. <laughs> yes. I know you don't like talking about it, so I'm just going to yeah. ask you. Uh, let me just ask you the, the easy question. How many swords did you win? Uh, three. All right. That's that's easy. So that's three Slayer easy. swords? Yeah. Uh, which, with which parts? With um, which the works? The first one with a with a uh, cooperation work. It was uh, it was allowed back in these days. Yeah. <laughs> uh, with uh, my friend uh, Kevin Kossel. He's mm -hmm. a sculptor here from Berlin. And uh, we uh, did the uh, the Throne of Judgment, mm -hmm. uh, quite a nice scene in uh, large scale, and it was a huge diorama. Yeah. And the um, the second one was with the uh, Lord Matsdamundi, mm -hmm. uh, lizard lizard man slan uh, on a stegadon, quite a, also quite quite yeah. a big thing. The lizard forge world slan on the stegadon with yeah. a tent and stuff, and Polly. The, only the parrot. <laughs> only the parrot. Uh, and I was very proud of that one because it got me the Slayer Sword in France. And France was uh, the toughest country back in the yeah, day. Yeah, we, yeah. we also traveled a lot uh, from game state to game stay. And uh, we met fantastic people. And yeah. It was a very nice atmosphere. People really wanted to share their ideas about miniature painting. Mm -hmm. And game state was just the place to be to meet people. Mm -hmm. And your third sword? The, th the third one was in Poland. Um, it was a, a diorama called The Last Survivor mm -hmm. with a drop pot that has been turned into uh, some kind of uh, se security house um, for an Imperial Guard guy, the last guy that survived the battle. Yeah. That was probably my favorite diorama you've done so far. It was really cool. Yeah, it's also still one, one of my favorites. Yeah. And uh, how many demons? Uh, actually, to be honest, I'm not 100% sure, but around 30, 33, maybe somewhere there. Okay. So, 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 <laughs> that's a quite, quite a bit. <laughs> so yeah, uh, the thing with, with Game Stays was, it was funny how it got me started. I went to a Golden Demon competition in 2003 with, uh, with Kevin, the, the, the friend that also got the first Slayer Sword with, and I prepared a lot of entries. <laughs> uh, for I think for each category, category. so um, and I won a demon with my worst miniature. <laughs> it was a Lord of the Rings miniature, uh, Galadriel. I painted that for two and a half hours, <laughs> and I, it got me a bronze demon. And I thought, okay, now people will think that this is the way I paint. So uh, I had to come back next year and prepare a, a serious entry. <laughs> so and that's how it started. Yeah. 
And as you said, you've been traveling to a lot of different game stays. Have you been to all of them? Have you been to Spain? Um, yeah, I've been to Spain. Um, but I haven't been to all of them. I haven't been actually... Uh, well, I have been to the Italian one, the French, Spain. Or well, you've not been to the Australian one. No, right? I have not been to the Australian one. And I haven't been to a lot of the uh, American ones. We've been together to one. Yeah. Um, but Memphis. In 2013, yeah. which was awesome, I yeah. would say. It was really well done. I mean, the whole game stay was well done. So, once again, thanks to the organizers there. Sad that you can't do it again. <laughs> but, no, it was, it was a really good uh, game stay. Kind of the, like, like a game stay of old, wasn't it? Yeah. It was really nice. But, yeah, um, I don't know. Where were they had game stays in uh, so many countries <laughs> back, at, back in the days? But, yeah, I've, I've been to most of them. Yeah. I wish I had went to the I've been to on to the last Italian one, mm. and that was actually not not so nice because it was f felt a, a, as if it already had been actually over. But it was empty, wasn't it? Yeah, it was quite empty. Uh, not a lot of people. Um, atmosphere was was a bit weird. But the Italian one used to be one of the one of the nicest events, and I've yeah. never been to the early ones. And people just keep telling me how nice it was and. Uh, so I went there and it was actually a bit too late to go there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's uh, talk a bit again about the uh, the painting. You can see I've also highlighted this part here from that side. Mm -hmm. And I will now give the other side um, some of the tank brown to really have the strongest contrast here meeting up in the middle. So if you're a tabletop painter, um, um, we understand that uh, probably our painting style is a little different than uh, just painting an army. Um, but there's some core rules that are the same, uh, like maximizing contrast um, is very, very important, uh, whether you are um, uh, painting for an army or just for the showcase. And um, I think um, what Ben just said in, in, the, in that um, kind of, what's a, the top part on the, on the, on the neck, um, he really tries to maximize the contrast between the white uh, that comes from the left and then the dark side that comes from the right, um, just in that middle point. And that's when, what we talk about when we talk about maximizing contrast. And especially for a non-metallic uh, gold or silver for that matter, yeah, that's for, extremely important. Yeah. True. Um, here the, the uh, huge breastplates are um, Kind of tricky because uh, you need to find a solution how you want to highlight them. There are several ways how, how you can think of highlighting them. You could go for a, a, a kind of a horizontal reflection here in the in the middle part, or you could just do a transition from light to dark. Um, as they're that big, I think it would be nice to give them a little bit more separation with a horizontal reflection in the mm -hmm. middle. Uh, and don't want it to be ultra sharp, uh, so it doesn't turn out to look like a airbrush painting from the eighties. Yeah. So uh, we'll try to do a um, like a satin satin kind of metal that is not ultra polished. Yeah. What Ben was referring to is what uh, we're painting also called sky earth non metallic metals, um, basically chrome painting. Uh, you can do this with uh, all kinds of metals, of course. It doesn't have to be chrome. And that was kind of um, something a lot of people have uh, very successfully uh, played around with. Um, but that style is a little bit outdated now, isn't it? Yeah, I think it's always a question of, of taste. But, uh, yeah, I think for me it's, it's, it's always been a bit too, too much, actually, visually. Okay, so I'm trying to give that upper edge and a transition with a lot of brush. Do you have the base color on the back or is it water? Thin base color. Okay. Yeah, and you can see how quickly you can create a nice blending, just basically one brush stroke. And uh, I know that some people go, oh my god, <laughs> that is awesome. <laughs> And it's not that hard. Again, it's uh, just touching the amount of uh, paint on the tip 
is uh, the key for the different surfaces and uh, the consistency of the paint is something you have to kind of get used to a little bit. Yeah. Okay. And for the uh, horizontal reflection, we will uh, work with glazes. You can uh, hear and see Ben blowing on the on the glazes a little bit uh, every now and then. Um, a glaze is so thin that it usually dries very, very quickly. And of course, if you blow at it, it's, uh, you're going to dry even uh, more quickly. And um, the key there is that the underlying paint has to be dry. If it's not completely dry and you go over it again, the danger is that you kind of tear off pigments and get some really nasty holes. And fixing those with glazes is very, very hard if not impossible. So you have to go with thicker paint again and try to fix stuff. What color do you have on there now? Um, it's a light, uh, light yellow tone, mm -hmm. but still highlight color. Also as a glaze tone. Yeah. yeah. So, what do you think about those uh, new models, just from a painter's perspective? Um, so far, they're they're really nice. Um, I think um, also how the model actually fitted together is uh, really really cool. Yeah. Um, easy to build together and also easy to to convert, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've seen some really cool conversions already on on uh, Facebook and other media. We had some, of course, we had some Space Marines, which also looked awesome, by the way. Um, it's still amazing because they are bigger than Space Marines, which is kind of weird. But um, then the, I think there was one elder, like with an elder head, it looked really awesome. And uh, but no, I agree with you. I think the the plastic model in the White Dwarf, at least, was. Um, I mean, Games Workshop knows how to do plastic. They really, yeah. really do. And uh, good fit, awesome, awesome. Uh, well, injection <laughs> cast or whatever you want to call that. Uh, really, really good quality. And I think uh, also from a, from a painter's perspective. Um, there's some really nice miniatures in there, um, especially in the chaos. Yeah, uh, it's something I really, really liked. And also, what were they called? The, the prosecutors. I personally like a lot. The the, the guys with wings. Yeah, really nice. Yeah, I also uh, really like the chaos ones. Uh, they look quite amazing. They yeah, could be really nice for a nice diorama. And the the, the cargo cool with that little beast there. Really, really cool. I mean, it's it's. Um, I want to say that these plastic miniatures, uh, from a, just from a painter's perspective, and again, I don't know, don't know, want to go into the whole politics of the game there. Um, everybody's got an opinion on that, but as far as far as models are concerned, these are really nice. Yeah. To me, they look a little bit like Warhammer Ten K. <laughs> it's like it's like we are on, we are on the way to being real space marines now. <laughs> Yeah, and you can see that with um, just small glazes 
um, you really like glaze after glaze, you can create some really soft results. Yeah, and I think um, one thing I should mention about the horizontal reflection is always good to have a transition to one line that is softened out a bit, but the we have a transition here from it's lighter in the middle and then it's darker to the top. Mm -hmm. And here it I glazed in some of the tank brown again, also to the towards the sides to make the whole uh, plates a bit darker. Mm -hmm. um, one important thing uh, as a next step is to do add little scratches and highlights to make the whole gold look a bit more sparkly and more interesting. Yeah. Um, I will first uh, draw in some dark red brown lines with tank brown and black and I will highlight them afterwards. This is also a really good tip if um, maybe you're a beginning painter and you're trying to um, go maybe for like a showcase uh, style or maybe you have like a, a command unit that you really want to look really good um, but your blendings are not as smooth as you want them to. Um, you can always identify those areas that are not so smooth and just put a scratch on top of it and uh, that helps a lot. <laughs> um, ben oftentimes that does the opposite. He creates a smooth blending and then he messes it up with, <laughs> with scratches but it just looks much better. Yeah, and it gives you a lot of opportunities to, to actually give the surface a very own look. Mm -hmm. So you see just uh, a few dark lines. And it's a highlight color, quite light, but it's, uh, not pure ivory. And highlight always the lower side of them. And I can also see why a good tip is important. <laughs> if those lines get a little too thick, you can always um, adjust it with the underlying color again. Yeah. Okay, and some uh, pure ivory for, for the top one. Some white here. Oh, that's that's thick. very thick, for example. Crack from the other side with the <laughs> if you hit the right tone. Yeah, if you hit the right tone. Yeah. yeah, I was wondering about that. It was a little off. <laughs> Again, because it's that warm, the for the small highlights, the color keeps drying up a little bit too fast. Yeah, you can see how it's not coming off the brush that easily. One of the things you see on the artist cam and uh, when the brush vanishes from the picture for a second or so, 
is uh, something very, very evil that Ben does. He's a brush licker. <laughs> He's going to anonymous meetings once a week. <laughs> Hello, I'm Ben, I'm a brush licker. No, but um, what we uh, always say is don't do it. Um, it's such as something that Ben has done for the last 12, 13 years. And uh, for him stopping now would probably help. <laughs> but um, the uh, brush licking is not necessarily the best habit, um, especially if you don't know what kind of paints you're using. Um, if it's uh, if it's the model uh, airs, uh, the scale colors, uh, even I think for the most part the, the citadels are non-toxic, at least that's what they say. Um, but um, if you're using something more exotic paints, um, for example, if you're using Tam Tamiya paints, you will not, I will not have to tell you not to lick them because they taste horribly. Uh, especially with oils, you don't want to do it because not only do they taste horribly, you're not going to be able to wash your mouth because they're oils. <laughs> but um, yeah, don't do it. Um, there's other ways of cleaning your brush. As we always say, do as we say, don't do as we do. All right. right, and a glaze with the red brown to the sides to make it a bit darker overall. Yeah, and you can see how, how quickly you can actually change the whole light situation just with a glaze. To let it dry. For me, uh, this side looks already quite nice, but here the I don't like the really like the transition so far, so. I just uh, no, it's got a little lost with that last wash uh, and with the last, last glaze, I think. So, when is the, the base color in the back of the brush again, and then just a very tiny bit in the tip for a loaded brush technique? Yep, it looks very metally, although this is non-metallic matte paint, so first first goal achieved a little bit, huh? <laughs> Not quite, quite to the end. Um, we will still highlight a little bit here the, the lower side with the, uh, actually just with the base color. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I don't want to go too bright on that. That's like a little bit reflection from from below. As you can see also, as, um, uh, again, if you're a beginning painter and you want to try some of these techniques, uh, just um, watch the direction of the brush. Uh, so when uh, Ben wants to put highlights on the bottom, he uh, moves the brush from top to bottom, always pushes the pigment in the direction of the desired effect. Um, if you don't do that, you will get coffee stains on the end of the brush stroke because that's where the pigments will accumulate. And a bit brighter just here for the very edge. Mm -hmm. stains here. So 
So when are you going to get that box, that starter set? It's quite tempting, actually. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. And again, you're not going to get it for for gaming, I guess. But it's actually, it's I think it's really good value. Um, again, I, I know there's a lot of politics and a lot of rage going on, but um, I think the the starter box, as far as um, just the value of miniatures is concerned, I think the average is something like two pounds or something a miniature, uh, like like two euros fifty or so. Um, and there's some really nice models in there. I have to say, yeah. it's really. I mean, some of the, the as we said, the, some of the chaos stuff is just exquisite. Um, and just for individual miniatures, just for individual showcase miniatures, there's some really cool stuff in there. So from a painter's perspective. Uh, yeah, also some really nice bits. Uh, yeah. To also spice up 40k figures or create some nice little chaos figures. Yeah. Yeah, I think Ben and I are a little bit, um, for different reasons, I guess, but we're both a little bit Games uh, Workshop fanboys. <laughs> And um, uh, we actually get the question a lot, why don't we paint more Games Workshop stuff in our Painting Buddha Academy? Um, like this, what you're seeing here is just a small project in the Academy. We have, um, we actually show much more in-depth um, stuff um, on, on, on miniatures, more parts uh, and so on. Of course, we are a little limited in time for this one. But um, um, we paint all kinds of different things. We have some War Machine stuff in there. We have... Uh, um, like large, large bus, uh, the recent one we did is the Shield Maiden from uh, Nuts Planet. Um, all kinds of things. And uh, the question we get is, well, why don't you just do a Games Workshop? Isn't that the biggest market? And, uh, well, two answers to that. First of all, no, it's not the biggest market for miniature painters. <laughs> it is a market, um, but uh, a lot of other companies have nice managers as well. Um, and so we're trying to paint all different kinds of styles, uh, always keep it very interesting and show different techniques on different models. Uh, for example, on the uh, Warjack we did from um, Private Press, uh, War Machines, uh, we did a lot of weathering stuff uh, on there, um, some really cool effects and stuff. Um, and the second reason uh, why we don't do it is because Games Workshop would probably shut us down. <laughs> There's some of those things we don't like about it with the legal department and stuff. So, uh, yeah, but I hope that this one video will not kill us. If it does, it was really nice meeting you guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nice. Yeah, that was uh, uh, quite nice and easy. And as you can see, we could have stopped before the, uh, the texture part. Uh, and it would have already looked okay, but uh, just going that little extra bit makes you think your miniature special. Yeah. All right, well, we, what we usually do when we do our projects, we um, kind of show everything. Um, like, uh, for example, we would uh, show one leg and then paint the other one off cam and so on. Um, we will uh, do something similar here. Um, mm -hmm. Ben will now finish a couple of pieces off cam, also the gold pieces. And... Um, yeah, especially like the the legs are yeah. the very same as the, as uh, we painted the the breast. So, mm -hmm. um, just uh, one thing: they we will have uh, a continuous light that goes from here over there, down there, same as on the other leg to get a very shiny metal look. But other than that, it's very very much the same as the breast plate. Yeah, so we'll do that off cam now, mm -hmm. uh, and we'll come back and do the gold on the shoulders and on the helmet. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. I can't wait. <laughs>